Hello, in this video I am going to discuss the transformer design. Um, I will discuss the transformer design for different transformers, um, topologies and waveforms. I will start with the sinusoidal waveform. Uh, here you can see that uh, I have shown the Faraday's law. The voltage is equal to the nt phi by dt, and if we rearrange uh, these uh, this equation and integrate on the both sides, um, we will get uh, this expression. And if we use uh, the sinusoidal voltage in this expression and integrate it, then we will get this expression. So this expression will give us the uh, maximum flux density as shown here and then we can also get a uh, number of turns if we rearrange these terms. So we will get uh, this expression for the number of terms and if we solve it further we will get this expression. This is a very well known expression for the transformer design in the case of a sinusoidal waveform. If we have a sinusoidal waveform which has an RMS voltage of 500 volt and if the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz and if um, the flux maximum flux density use is 0.2 tesla then um, we can calculate the number of turns uh, the only, we also require uh, the area of the core the cross section area of the core and if we have this cross section area of the core then we will get the number of turns from the for the primary if this voltage is primary voltage and you can also get the number of turns for the secondary voltage if you have 200 volt for example then uh, for example 250 volt then you will get the half uh, for approximately the 40 number of turns so this expression is used for the sinusoidal waveform now if we have uh, another waveform Mm, like uh, a square wave or a rectangular wave then we can again use this Faraday's law uh, the voltage is equal to n delta phi by delta t and if we choose uh, if we put the value of delta phi as delta b ae this cross section area of the core then mm, we will get this expression so if now if we know this voltage and if we know the area and if we know the time for which this voltage is applied then we can also calculate the number of turns from here for example if we have uh, if the voltage v is applied for a time 0.5 of t t is the time period if it is a balanced uh, square wave so if we put these values here this is the uh, time for which this voltage is applied across the winding so we will get then this expression and now then if we rearrange we will get the number of turns with this expression now here we can find this ae value this is from the data sheet we know the switching frequency this can be for example 100 kilohertz and if we know the delta b delta b is the change in the flux density when this voltage is applied for example if we are at this point and if we apply the voltage positive voltage we will go in this direction and if we reverse the voltage the same voltage across the winding then we will come back from this point to so to this point so the total change in voltage is to be maximum this is the maximum value so if the voltage is just the positive voltage then we are going then, just, then we are going just from this point to this point and then coming back to this point and again going in this direction so this we will remain in this area if the voltage is just positive across the winding as in the case of the flyback converter so the change will be just b maximum if the voltage is not reversing its, its polarity across the core so you have to see how you are applying the voltage across the core or across the winding so we get a general expression for the number of turns it is this one if the polarity is reverse you can use 2b at in this formula because the change in the flux density is 2b so you will get this formula with this formula you can find the number of turns 
for square waves or for rectangular waves you have to use these the all the values now we go to the next slide here i've shown an example for a push pull transformer here you can see that i am using again the faraday's law and this is the n this is the change in the flux and this is the voltage applied across the winding here you can see this is the vdc voltage and this voltage is applied across this winding when this switch is turned on and this the same voltage is applied across this part when this transfer this transistor is turned on so actually the current will be flowing in this direction if this is on and the current will be flowing in this direction if this transistor is on so the flux will change from b maximum in in this positive plus b maximum when the current is flowing in this direction and the flux will go to minus minus uh, pi maximum when the current is flowing in this direction so the total change in flux will be to phi maximum and this is the time in which this change will happen so the flux will go from this point to this point and then when the other transistor is turned on the flux will go from this point so to this point so the total change is this one this is the voltage which is applied across here and then across here so if you re rearrange the term we will get this expression so this is the same expression which is derived here so you can see that for the change of 2b max we have this expression and then you can calculate the number of secondary terms with this simple formula here you can here i have another example of an half bridge converter here again you you can see that this is the voltage v in this is half of the v in is across this one half is across this one so if we turn the transistor on if we turn on the q2 and if we turn on q1 then if we turn on q1 then the voltage will be positive a positive voltage v by 2 v in by 2 will be applied here and if we turn this one off and turn this one on then a negative voltage will be applied across this binding so you can see that we apply half of the voltage across this one in one direction and then the other half across this one in the negative direction so you can see this voltage is applied when this voltage is applied the flux will change from negative to positive in this time and then we can re rearrange the terms and we'll get this expression in this expression we will have an 8 in the previous expression we, we have 4 so you can use uh, this 8 is coming because half of the voltage is applied across this winding so you can then use if your this voltage is 340 volt and if the flux maximum flux density is this one and if the area of the core is this one and if the switching frequency is 240 kilohertz you can get the number of turns n1 and then you can use the simple formula for calculating the number of turns on this side now i have shown another example this is the flyback converter here again we apply the faraday's faraday's law and if now in this case the voltage is uh, just going from zero to um, some maximum value vdc value this value and then it is coming back to the zero point so the change in flux is just positive the flux is just if we see this diagram if the, the flux is just going from here to here and then coming back and then going back so the, the change in flux is just b max so we can apply again this faraday's um, law this is the change in flux this is if the duty cycle is uh, 0.5 t then um, the change in flux is happening in this time and this is the voltage which is applied across this winding so simply putting all the values in this equation and rearranging we will get this expression so here you we can see we, we are getting 
2 b maximum not 4 b maximum or 8 b maximum so you always has to see what is the value of this delta b so this is the delta b here we have delta b just b maximum if we have delta b as 2b maximum then we will get here 4 and similarly what is the voltage uh, which is the voltage which, which which is applied across this winding will also define uh, define this factor so generally <coughs> Uh, you can use uh, this expression also for all the waves just you have to see that what is your delta b if you put the correct delta b and correct vdc then you can use also this expression so i have derived this expression for different uh, number of turns expression for different type of topologies and also for the sinusoidal waveform now i will discuss how to select the b maximum value here is the graph which is given in the tdk data sheet it is uh, known as the performance factor versus frequency curve this is the frequency axis this is this product here this is called the performance factor and it it is drawn for different type of cores and uh, I use usually N87 for my frequencies 100 kilohertz or 300 kilohertz so you can see if I use 100 kilohertz then you can read the value from here it is approximately uh, 0.185 Tesla so you have to read this value and then divide it by this frequency you will get 0.185 Tesla for 100 kilohertz for N87 um, core similarly if you have a 250 kilohertz frequency somewhere here you can see that it is it will be uh, uh, 0.2 again tesla if we divide 250 with the 250 uh, then you will get 0.2 uh, tesla so we can use these values as our p maximum this curve is drawn for this uh, power loss density so the tdk is uh, recommending us to use uh, we can use this value uh, and these performance curves for our uh, design mm, this value can be you can also use a lower value then there will be a lower core loss but the problem is then you will have mere winding loss where couple loss and then it is better to design the transformer where that so that the binding loss and the core loss are the same they have the same value uh, for the nominal load so using a very low value uh, for the core loss will cause a very high copper loss so you can use this value or you can use some other values for example i have used uh, i have drawn here two graphs this is the software uh, which is available from the tdk you can mm, draw this product versus frequency for n87 core and here you can see for 100 kilohertz if we have a mm, power loss density of 300 then we can we will get a b maximum value of 0.185 just like as shown here from this graph and if we have if we want to use 100 uh, if we want to use here 100 kilowatt per meter cube then uh, the graph will be this one and then we can use this flux uh, maximum flux in our uh, equation in these equations so this is the procedure to select the b maximum value so here is the ef i have shown the eft 30 core uh, here you can see the air cross section area if you have selected this core with the area product then you can use this expression this value in your uh, number of turns calculations and then you can use this volume to calculate the temperature rise here uh, for the n87 core um, it is saying that uh, at 100 kilohertz if we use uh, this flux density then we will have a power loss of 2.6 watt so you can also use this watt value to calculate the temperature rise here i've shown this um, thermal resistance of the core eft core 30 you can see it is 25 kelvin per watt 
so we can use this value along with this volume value and this power value to calculate the temperature rise so if you are using a lesser value of uh, flux density you will have lower loss lower core loss so here i've shown this thermal uh, resistance of the eft core which we have taken from here and then uh, this is the 300 kilowatt per meter cube uh, power loss density uh, which is uh, for this curve for this curve or for this curve uh, this one so you can use this value and multiply it this with the volume of the core here and then you will get the total core loss so the total core loss if we use the flux density this flux density then it will be this one and if we multiply this value with this thermal resistance and you can see the temperature rise of the core so in this way you can use um, these uh, you can these uh, these calculation uh, to find out uh, the total temperature rise you can use this 2 milli tesla if we use this value uh, 2.6 watt here here and then if you multiply it by this one then you will get a little bit higher value so you can use this value also or this value depending upon but uh, it is recommended to use this value in the tdk data sheet mm, so this is uh, all about the transformer design i have not uh, here mentioned the uh, how to um, calculate the uh, size of the core um, this we will discuss in the next video when i discuss the area product calculations thank you